The year is 2021, and there has not been a better time to start learning Dart. I'm Brad Seipert, a software engineer with over 10 years experience in the field, and today I'm going to tell you why I think you should learn Dart in 2021. Let's get to it. On October 10th of 2011, two Googlers took to the stage to announce the arrival of the Dart programming language. Dart entered the scene as JavaScript's popularity was beginning to skyrocket, and ultimately it had big shoes to fill. Shortly after announcing Dart, Google announced that the Dart VM would be built into Chrome, enabling a first-class competitor to JavaScript for client-side web development. In 2015, Google decided to not build the Dart VM into Chrome, and a lot of people began to question Dart's future, myself included. We were left with a lot of questions, but didn't really have a lot of answers. In 2017, Google announced Flutter, which is a UI toolkit for building beautiful, natively compiled applications for mobile, web, and desktop from a single code base. At Flutter's initial launch, the platforms supported weren't as vast as they are today, but we'll get to that in a moment. The key takeaway from this Flutter piece is that Dart is the language that powers the Flutter framework, and it turns out that it does that quite well. Flutter itself covers a lot of ground. In fact, almost any client-side experience that you want to build could be built with Flutter. There are some applications, however, that Flutter might not be conducive for, such as blogs, where search engine optimization is extremely relevant. But Flutter is not the only place to write Dart. You can build command line interfaces, web servers, and so much more with the language. Dart applications can be built out as JavaScript bundles, machine code via the Dart Virtual Machine AOT pipeline, or as just-in-time compiled code running on the Dart virtual machine. You can write front-end web, mobile, server, desktop, and command line applications with Dart. This effectively means you can run Dart code just about anywhere. Dart has an extremely mature asynchronous programming toolkit that provides a simple interface to futures with standard future callbacks like .then, as well as support for async functions and the await syntax that most JavaScript developers have come to love. If you need something a bit more reactive, Dart's async toolkit also has streams, which can be thought of as lists of data over time. Finally, there's support for isolates. These are definitely out of the scope for this introduction to Dart, but they're a way to work with the additional cores on the machine that your code's running on with an isolated memory heap. Additionally, Dart syntax should be familiar to a lot of developers. I find that it's a nice hybrid between TypeScript and Java, and offers great support for object-oriented programming, as well as some of the functional patterns that I've learned to love in TypeScript. The language is also type-safe, and recently added full support for sound null safety. I won't say that Dart is perfect for me, I still often find myself trying to define type unions like I do in TypeScript, but I do find that, for me, Writing Dart is an extremely enjoyable experience. We've touched on Dart's async support, but there are many other core libraries that ship with the language too. There's additional support for collection-based operations, encoders and decoders between data representations, a rich math library, IO, tools for managing and working with isolates, reflection, HTML, JavaScript, and so much more. It's not as batteries included as Python, but I find that Dart ships with what I need to get the job done. These are just some of the awesome parts about writing Dart. If you're ready to learn more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you'll get notifications as I push out more Dart videos in this playlist. I look forward to seeing you back as we cover building Dart applications, Dart syntax, Flutter applications, and so much more. Thanks.